Hello everyone on YouTube and today Audrey and I are going to be talking about mysteries of God and specifically mystery of the cross. So that is something that um, Holy Spirit kind of just put it in my head today and we I have been seeking the Lord for a week to asking him what he want us to talk about, but I didn't get any answer until today. And something that just happened. So yeah, so today for Dreaming with Holy Spirit, that will be our topic. And so we have a few verses that we would like to go through. But Audrey, would you like to share about the verses you got in Isaiah? I hadn't actually looked it up yet because I thought that was going to be later on in the recording. Oh, okay well then you put me on the spot would you look it up and i will read um what i got from here yes so in new testament first corinthians um first corinthians chapter four so this is paul writing to the corinthian church that a man so consider us a servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. So this was mentioned in the beginning of the chapter. And, but I also want us to remember that actually in the original writing of the, the old Bible verses, there, they didn't label it as verse one or chapter four. It was everything all connected together. So obviously the Bible scholar had developed a system to help us to better track where, um, how you can read it. But in the original content, how they wrote, wrote it, it was literally like a letter. And so it didn't and combine of many letters together. So there wasn't any chapter or any verses. So I'm going to continue to read a bit further to verse five. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I sh should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. So that's Paul speaking. For I know of nothing against myself. Yeah, I'm not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. So a lot of people actually had taken this part. Um, they kind of misinterpreted. So here he's talking about like a lot of time you hear like the body of Christ talking about, oh, you know, you can't judge me. Only God can judge me, right? Actually, so they are quoting, indirectly quoting this part of what Paul is talking about. So the word judge here in the origin content is meaning of a conclusion so what does that mean it's that when we so and there's a difference between discernment and a lot of time the word judge and discernment they have very very similar or overlapping meaning in the bible so the Bible also talk about we should discern all things, that including people and people's intentions and people's heart intentions and different things in different situations. And that is part of being children of God. And so in this content that Paul was talking about, that he won't even be judged by other people or human court. And he doesn't even judge himself. So that is talking about he doesn't, that he doesn't really care 
that other people, how other people see him and conclude him. And he didn't really even care about how human court had concluded about him. And obviously we know Paul had a different path when, before he came to Christ. So he's saying that he does not conclude himself as when, when we make a conclusion, we're summing up something or an issue or a situation to say that's a final um, judgment, that's a final say. And so as we are believer in Christ, we continue to allow Holy Spirit to refine us that he will continue to grow us, mature us as we yield to him and as he, as we allow him to come to show us where we need to repent, where we need to surrender, where we need to hand our life over to him. You know, we need to fully surrender every part of our life and allow him to correct us. So he is saying, <clears throat> Paul is saying that the final judgment belongs to the Lord. That means when we discern people's heart and intention, that we do not say they will always be like that because the Lord can change people's hearts. And so how does this tie into the mystery of God? So let's go back to the mystery of God. So mystery of God, mystery of God has to do with the reincarnation I mean, not the incarnation, not reincarnation, sorry, that was the wrong phrase. Um, reincarnation, that will be from the Eastern belief, Eastern religion. Incarnation of the Son of God, which is Jesus Christ, which is a mystery. And if you look at different religion, and there's also a difference between believing in the religion of Jesus, which is Christian, Christianity, and having a relation with Jesus is completely different. And, but if you look at different religion, there's Buddhism, there's Muslim, and there's um, different type of belief in different religion and different gods. That you don't see anyone as any divine deity that come in the flesh, to literally bearing the sin of human being. You will see Buddha was um, the, you know, if, if you guys don't understand, don't know much about Buddhism, which is the, this Indian prince decided to abandon um, his royal inheritance to leave everything behind to be a monk and to, he claimed to receive the revelation of the universe and that he see all, all the stuff happening in the world, all the pain, suffering and war, and he didn't want that. But, so he started, he thought he had a revelation of the divine universe, which is, is in another way he believed, you know, the universe just happened, it's an energy. And that's where all the new age people start to mix in Buddhism into their belief about the universe. But things don't just create by itself. There's usually a creator. There's someone who crafts something. If there's a chair, someone will make the chair or the factory will make the chair, you know, but someone will always design something. So, but there's no any other religion really truly that um, any divine entity come in the form of man to literally wipe out the sin of human being. There's some belief that their divine entity come in a form of man, or maybe they they um they mix race with human, and then so they produce descendant or half human, half 
God. But however, it wasn't for the purpose for dying for the sin of human beings. So by itself, that is a mystery. And a lot of time as believers, don't you think, Audrey, in the body of Christ Act, we have thinking that we had hear about that all the time and that's part of the core of the, the gospel. So do you think maybe we had um, overlook that mystery? Personally, for me, there were times when I, I grew up Baptist um, and we'd hear about Jesus Christ coming in the flesh and then dying on the cross for us. Um, just recently, the Lord has brought me back to the mindset of, I think sometimes we diminish the significance and the importance of him dying on the cross because we have become so desensitized to death and we have become so desensitized to people being murdered from video games to the news to everything else. So to us, sometimes we can like think of it as, oh, it's just another man that died. It's just another man who lost his life. So we have to go back to the word where it talks about he spilled his blood for our salvation. He spilled his blood so that we can be brought back to the father. We're in the context of us being in a society that is so bloodthirsty and so focused on violence and gore and death that oftentimes we miss the significance of what he did for all of humanity. Mm -hmm. um, so that was just something the Lord's been bringing up to my mind over the last couple of months about how we do not pay respect to the sacrifice that was made because we've almost become numb to yeah. the extent of what he suffered and what he went through. And in this society, we really don't firsthand see that that often where people are dying for their faith or people are dying for the good of somebody else. And if we do, it's always secondhand information. So obviously the word is the revelation. The word is God. Like the in the beginning was the word, the word was with God. So having this, it's kind of like this is the go-between between Jesus dying on the cross and then us getting that revelation through the power of the Holy Spirit to understand how significant it was, the mystery yeah, yeah. of the cross. Yes, I agree. And I believe that in the body of Christ that a lot of us, including myself in the past, that have really just become in some way become lukewarm that we get this sentence tie about the power of the cross but also the power of the resurrection of jesus christ and how that is so different because when you think about it that um the gospel is actually a very very potent message because that among all the religion that they are certain religion, it they do address about sinful nature of man. But the way they do is that they, um, including Buddhism and also Muslim, they address it as that you just need to come here to do good and and hopefully one day you will be safe. Hope, hope not, well, not won't be safe. Hopefully one day you will be okay. Hopefully one day you will um, get out of that sinful, lustful nature. And so the word of God has addressed that as a fleshy nature of human. And another way as um, commonly people, think, you know, say it's a, humanistic belief and you might say well how can humanistic belief is you know evil so even for the best part as what human can do and obviously human can achieve a lot of things as building amazing amazing building and structures and um and or giving you know to the poor and everything but however, it still rely on human strength. And so the potent message of the mystery of the cross in the gospel is that it doesn't matter how we how much good things we can do, we will never be perfect because 
it was the sinful nature of human being. And so this is a lot of time people think, oh, you know, like I'm a good person. So, and I, I had, there's a few times that when I was sharing about the gospel on the street with certain strangers, they have talked about this, which is whenever I talk about, you know, like repentance or sinful nature of man, they will say, I am a good person. And I do this, this, this. So the thing is like being a good person cannot save us, cannot save us from our sinful nature because the Bible also talk about when we were once, we were once children of wrath. We were once children of the enemy, which is Satan. And we didn't have any power to resist that. So, so there's a lot of things that in the gospel, it has so much mystery that being unfolds through everything Jesus had done, but also the, the very heart purpose for why he had come to become a human and then die for our sin because and just a quick sharing of testimony that my family was you know they're buddhist so i'm the first generation christian and when i was a kid i always feel that i was trying to be do good thing because buddhists promote a lot so you know you also help the poor you help the homeless they also do that you help the elderly um, but the foundation was built on you trying to earn your way to um, to Havana, which is their idea about paradise. You had to earn your way to paradise, but there's no really indicator how you can really for sure and guarantee enter into paradise. So that had got me thinking at a really young age that how do I know there's any guarantee that I will be safe from that trap or that cycle? Then the Holy Spirit was breathing on me even I wasn't a Christian. Then I was drawn to something about Jesus and the gospel. Even though I, you know, I couldn't go to church because my, my family was a Christian, they wouldn't allow me to. That's something about Jesus about what he did was really, really drawn to me. And it addressed the issue of sin and how we cannot um, prove our way to be safe. And also because of what Jesus had done that he was perfect, that he paid for our sin. Because if God had died for our sin, which is by us, mind blowing, how can a God really care about us that much? Because if you look at a lot of major religion, they don't portray a God actually care about human at all. And so, and how would they want it to leave their, um, dwelling place to literally save human from their corruption and sinful nature. So by itself, that's a mystery. And the reason, the only reason Jesus would do that because in the Bible say God is love. And so, so next time we're probably going to talk about other things, but um, on our channel, probably from the Kingdom of Origins, about difference between human love and God's love, because there's a huge difference between human love and how we interpret love and God's love. And but in the Bible, in the Word of God, it says God is love. So that means we shouldn't use our human understanding to interpret what love should be. So Jesus should be this way, because if Himself 
you know, one of the Godhead was he is love, then we need to know he is a standard of love and not trying to lower it to how we see it. So because he loved us, so he came as a human being and to die on a cross. He's beside healing the sick, casting out demon, which is we believe that is still for today and the body of Christ and the church should be doing that. And also that's called a power gift, but it's through yielding to Holy Spirit every day to humble ourselves and fully surrender our life to him, to obey him and not obey our fleshy nature. He will be able to flow through us through the Holy Spirit. And that there's so many mystery unpacked and you know for the bible that mystery didn't get revealed until jesus christ the son of god came in the flesh so there are many cult claim that they have the mystery of the universe or the mystery of god but the ministry, the mysteries of God, it's actually fully made open and unpacked when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came in the flesh. And when he had died on the cross for every human being sin from the past, from the current, and into the future. Every human sin every human sin and also the third part of mystery well it's that he was resurrected by the power of holy spirit and taken out of shield that by itself is another mystery that holy spirit he was fully submitted to the father god and have fully trust us because he had to come as a foreigner man. He couldn't use his authority as a son of God to overcome temptation and sin and tribulation when he was on earth because he had to overcome everything and sins just like us. So he, so that was the greatest exchange that so we can live as sons and daughters of God but if he had walked on the earth as son of God then we won't be able to walk like him and Holy Spirit so he had to yield to Holy Spirit to entrust Holy Spirit to resurrect him and that's another mystery and then how you know, when he was resurrected, that he also sent Holy Spirit as a great helper to the body of Christ. Yes, yeah, so that will be kind of a summary of the mystery of the cross, but also mystery of the gospel. Um, so Audrey, have you have the Bible verse ready about Isaiah? Yeah, so... In the book of Isaiah, it is chapter 53. I'm sure many believers are familiar with this passage. And it is Isaiah prophesying about the Lord's servant who would come and be punished for the sins of the people. Um, And the part of this that stuck out to me was starting at verse 10. And it says, the Lord says, it was my plan to crush him and cause him to suffer. I made his life a guilt offering to pay for sin but he will see all of his children after him. In fact, he will continue to live. My plan will be brought about through him. After he suffers, he will see the light that leads to life and he will be satisfied. My godly servant will make many people godly because of what he will accomplish. He will be punished for their sins. So what I think is really important to note, I know a lot of people 
Um, especially in this day and age, new believers oftentimes spend so much time in the New Testament and they do not go back into the Old Testament as much. They are so focused on the Gospels which is great. That's excellent for the understanding of the new covenant. However, going back to the old covenant and reading the prophecies that were spoken, reading about the law that was in place helps get a better understanding of the significance of Jesus coming and dying on the cross for our sins, for our salvation. So what I love about the old time prophets was that they had this revelation they have this understanding there will be a servant of the Lord who comes and suffers for humanity, yet they did not see it. They did not see it come to pass. They had they had passed away long before that came to be. Um, so in the book of Hebrews, it also talks about that the heroes of the faith, they did not receive what the Lord had promised them. Um, they saw it a far way off. They understood and perceived that the Lord had promises that were not necessarily for this earthly realm, but for the spiritual. So that is another way that we can continue to understand that when it comes to the mystery of the cross, we need to perceive it as something that is supernatural, as something that is so incredibly spiritual that it comes from the spirit and manifests on the earth. And that's why we are able to receive and take part in the salvation that the Lord Jesus brought to us through his death and his resurrection. Um, the book of Hebrews, I highly recommend for those who want to understand more about the mystery of the cross and Jesus's sacrifice. Paul goes very, uh, the, the writer of Hebrews, which I assumed was Paul, perhaps it wasn't. I think I've heard that it could have been somebody different. I need to look into that more. But the writer of Hebrews talks a lot about the blood of Christ, about worship in the holy tent, about Christ's sacrifice, and then about us being faithful after we have received what Christ came to do. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10, 10 says, we have been made holy by what God wanted. We have been made holy because Jesus Christ offered his body once and for all time. So the mystery of the cross was that it was not a one-time thing that needed to be repeated. It was a once and for all done. It only had to happen once because when they were under the law, when everyone was under the law before the new covenant came, a sacrifice was made every year. They had to present a sacrifice. Um, and with Jesus's death, there are no more sacrifices that have to be made. He has already covered all of it with his blood. And that is a great mystery in itself. Um, so there was one other verse that I wanted to quote really quick. Where was it? Oh, I missed it. Oh, it's Hebrews 10, three. Well, I'll start with verse. I'll start with verse one. The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming. It is not the real things themselves. The same sacrifices have to be offered over and over again. They must be offered year after year. That's why the law can never make perfect those who come near to worship. If it could, wouldn't the sacrifices have stopped being offered? The worshipers would have been made clean once and for all. They would not have felt guilty for their sins anymore. But those offerings remind people of their sins every year. So another thing that's important to note about the mystery of the cross is that Jesus's death took away the guilt, took away the condemnation, took away the feelings that we would suffer with when we sin, because the sacrifices that were made by people wasn't able to get away, like it wasn't able to eradicate the condemnation and the guilt that people felt it because also of their took away the blood, the blood penalty as well. Right. Right. So through Jesus's sacrifice, he also took away the guilt and the condemnation. And that is a significant mystery in itself. So back to you. Yeah. yeah so also in Isaiah. So just to mention quickly that New Testament and, um, and Old Testament's relationship should be part one and part two. Just as like you reading anything. You can read part two when you haven't read part one. It's because you might 
not fully understand the fullness of part two if you just only reading part two. And so that's the Bible say that the new covenant, which is, you know, also part of the New Testament is the new testament is the fulfillment of the old testament so it's not that it's not that it erases it it's actually fulfilling it so the same thing as like you reading anything or even you reading book you can read a series of book only reading the second book and then you don't read the first one because there might be things happening that you don't understand. If you don't read the first one, then it will. Because the second part for the New Testament is a building up from the foundation of the part one. So the, the Old Testament and the New Testament relationship is like the New Testament is a building up upon the foundation of the Old Testament. And there are many, many prophecy in the Old Testament from different prophets and almost symbolic meaning of Jesus as the son of God, what he was ordained to do before he was sent on the earth, including Isaiah 61 as well. And there are many, many, so we're not gonna go into all of it today. So Isaiah 61 is talking about the mandate of Jesus Christ, that he was anointed to preach a good tiding to the poor and to bind up and, or heal, depends on your translation, the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty of the captive, which is people are living in sin, And the opening the present to those who are bonded to proclaim this a several year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. And yeah, so the list, so everything that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was called to do, his mandate was listed in Isaiah 61. So to talk about this is that the mysteries of God was unpacked and lived out as Jesus lived out his life. And so as Christians or believers that we understand Jesus died for our sin on a cross and he was resurrected and the Holy Spirit came to um, pour out over, you know, the, over the body of Christ for the early church, for the Pentecost. So how are those things significant? A lot of people think, well, you know, like, why can we move on from that basic gospel? Why can we move on from that? We've been talking about it and, or you just think, oh, that's, Oh, that just, that just, the church I talk about that so often. Like you hear that sermon like so many times, which is true. And, but we also should not be desensitized from it as well. Because think about it. So Jesus Christ, the son of God, you know, was living out his mandate that the Lord had given to him. He has to die for human sin. So if Jesus didn't die for human sin, think about this. How do we as the, the body of Christ today, how does that affect us? And the other thing is, the second thing is he was resurrected by the Holy Spirit. So if he didn't, if he wasn't resurrected by the power of the Holy Spirit, then how does that affect us today as believers, as the body of Christ? And the third thing is, 
if Holy Spirit wasn't sent from Jesus, the Son of God, from heaven, to be poured out over the body of Christ, how does that affect believers today and Christians today? It will change a lot of things. That if Jesus didn't die for our sin, then then we couldn't, you know, we couldn't release. We couldn't set the captives free. And we couldn't proclaim the gospel to tell people that the sin was erased because why Jesus Christ as a perfect lamb die for us so that means even within the body of christ that all of us will still be living under the shaming guilt condemnation but also the the blood penalty of sin wasn't satisfied and the second thing if if jesus died for our sin but he wasn't resurrected by the holy spirit what does that do to us that means Jesus could die for our sin, but, you know, the Bible says we need to die to our sin and be alive in Christ, right? And as we get baptized, as a symbolize that we, we are fully die at that moment when Jesus was on the cross. And think about it. This is amazing mystery, too, that the moment every single person wanted to surrender their life to God. Literally is transcend between space and time. Their sin and themselves literally die on the cross at the very same moment. And this is not just, this is actually a supernatural event happened. It's not just a symbolic thing. And somebody prayed, they will take it as if this is a symbolic thing that when you have given your life to Christ, that it's a symbolic thing you, you know, you, your sin died on the cross. No, it's, this actually happened. That transcend time and space, that our sin and our old self being nailed on the cross with Jesus. And Jesus, if Jesus didn't wasn't raised up by the Holy Spirit, then we will not have the power to be alive in Christ, to literally have a new being, and that's talking about the old wine skin and the new wine skin. We wouldn't have the new wine skin. And just as the old wine skin die, then we cannot be alive in Christ. And if Holy Spirit wouldn't send to us as helper, we will still be as a lost sheep. That we won't be able. So a lot of the time, Holy Spirit to me, he is like a guy in kind of like a, well, the best way I can describe it is that if you just give your life over to Christ, he's like a tourist guy to show you a new country. And you don't know nothing about the language, nothing about how they interact, nothing about, you know, their culture. And so you need someone to help you, right? And so Holy Spirit is that person who will help you, who speak the language, who know the culture. And he will introduce you and teach you about this new kingdom in Christ. Without him, we can't literally navigate in the kingdom of God because it's not a physical kingdom. It's, it's a spiritual kingdom that is completely different wrong. And only him can show us how to function and lift us sons and daughters of God and ambassadors in Christ in that kingdom. So if we have just only Jesus Christ, Son of God, die for us and resurrect by Holy Spirit, but Holy Spirit wasn't sent to us a helper. We probably will feel lost 
in the kingdom of God. And sadly, that's a lot of time that in the body of Christ, there's a part of the body of Christ don't believe that Holy Spirit is still here for us and the give a Holy Spirit and everything he has for us still for us today. So that is saying that, yeah, that, you know, you now you're in a, you got a new citizenship, but then you're feeling lost in that country because you don't speak the language and no one can show you how to, how does that country function and what's the laws of that country and what is, um, what's the culture of that country? You have no clue. So yeah, so that's pretty much for today for talking about mystery of the cross, but also mystery of God. And we are ambassadors of mysteries of God to bring that mystery to, to people, whether online or you know in person. However, to know that it is not our responsibility how they react to it. Because remember that the gospel is potent because it addresses about sin, and as we know, like in our day and age, people don't want to feel that they sin. And so it was a play, it was erased. It was an erased topic in many, or some people, I, I guess like now people call it like cancel culture, that they, they wanted to not talk about that. They wanted to brush it um, under the mat and but it is you know if you're searching and I encourage you to and there's a big difference between between striving trying to be a Christian and fully surrender to God to give your life fully to the Lord and which is Sally in the body of Christ, um, a lot of people, including me in the past, that had tried really hard to be a Christian. And there's a huge difference between surrendering and striving. So Audrey, would you like to add to that? Do you have any revelation about that? I do not. Okay. You, you, you covered a, a large like majority of it. Okay. Just once again, I would encourage those that watch this, definitely seek the Lord and read the book of Hebrews, where the author dives into those mysteries of the cross and the significance of his sacrifice. I'm going to go probably reread it in a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to lead us in prayer at the end. And if you are seeking for the truth, if you are feeling you know your life is lack of purpose and there is a difference between trying to make yourself good which is a lot of religion have tried to do that including buddhism and muslim and other religion and and yes we want it to be good but the only way um God is good, like the Lord is good. And so the only way to be good is to literally be like him, to receive his image. And the only way to receive his image to surrender our life to him. And every believers, every Christian, we need to surrender our life to him every single part of our life and in certain season he will challenge us to tell us would you surrender your life to me again not just giving our heart not just giving part of our life but every part that means to live in christ to be alive in the spirit realm that he may also challenge us to do things and obey him that our fleshy nature not going to like. But if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I will leave you this prayer. So let's pray. 
Father God, I thank you for everyone seeking you. That seeking for purpose, seeking for understanding about their life. And I ask you, Lord, to pour your revelation into their life, Lord. Make yourself known to them. How you're holy, how you're how you're good, how you're righteous. Father God, I also ask you to move upon the body of Christ had fallen away from the mysteries of the cross, the mystery of the gospel. And thinking it's like, oh, that's a basic, that's a fun, that's, you know, not important anymore. But to know that through what Jesus had done, that it unpacked everything. And that's everything you use Jesus Christ and God's perfect blood to accomplish so many things in your life. And we ask you, Lord, to take us deeper, dive deeper into the truth of God. And also, we ask you to stir a hunger and thirst for the mysteries of the cross and the mysteries of the gospel. We ask you to bring us to a place of surrendering fully for every part of our life. And Father God, I also pray for all the seekers, every single seekers in Christ, that they are, you're drawing their heart and I draw them to a place that to an encounter with you for them to fully give their life to you. So if you are, um, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, then know that it comes with a cost, which is that we need to fully die to ourselves and our fleshy nature. But Holy Spirit will also empower us to walk in him. And this is not about trying to be good, it's literally about surrendering. And if you don't know how to surrender, that's okay. Holy Spirit can teach you how to. You just need to ask. So just pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I fully surrender my life to you. Every single part of my life. I allow you to speak to me. I thank you for what Jesus Christ, the Son of God, had done for me to die for my sin. So I hand over my life to you. And I ask you to make me a life in Christ as a son of God or as a daughter of God. I ask you to empower me with the Holy Spirit to live out what you call me to do, but also to show me how to be a son or a daughter of God. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your empowerment. I thank you, Father. I ask you to baptize me with Holy Spirit and give me encounter and revelation of the Lord, personal revelation of the truth of God through the word of God as well. So, Thank you, Father God. We give you all the glory, all the honor. And we ask you to teach us how to surrender every part of our life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So thank you for joining us today for Dreaming with Holy Spirit. And we will see you next time.